the NHL Stanley Cup Finals are here. We have a lot of questions to answer. Today is going to be everything Stanley Cup Final, predicting the final, answering if the Canadian curse will be broken by the Edmonton Oilers or if the Florida Panthers finish their revenge tour. Yeah, uh, before we continue this very quickly, the NBA Finals prediction is already out. So make sure you guys check that video out. Hit the subscribe button and po hit the bell for, so when you guys are notified when we drop videos. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. Before you, we talk about the actual series itself, two things I want to say. One, because you alluded to the Canadian curse. Boston Pizza, you have the worst commercial I've ever seen in my entire life. All right. <laughs> All right. I, I want to get that bro, out of the I'm way. Right now, we bro. never addressed this on the pod. I had to say it again. We are not combining with anyone. They were, they were, um, they sent, because they sent fake green men to that uh, game uh, in Edmonton, I think game four or whatever it was. Like what? This time? They were like fake, they sent like fake green men. Oh. And stuff. So, so they represent the Canucks type of thing. And then someone looked like he was wearing like a Leafs jersey, but it wasn't like Leafs on it and stuff like that. Yeah. So, Unless you sponsor us, which uh, we don't know if you want to anymore because of <laughs> because of the. Wait, I'll take the free ravioli. Sure. <laughs> no, that 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 is one of the worst commercials I've seen from a Canadian Bro. fan's perspective. Casual f Canadian fans would want a Canadian team to win, and to be, w w I want to correct our mistake. I think Edmonton does have the more Canadians than Florida. To be, to uh, when I think they posted the thing, Sportsnet posted it. Um, but casual fans would just want a Canadian team to win, like the younger selves, our younger selves would. But the true diehard fans know what, what it's going to be like when a Canadian team wins. There's parade and everything is going to go hectic. We're going to be jealous if that's the case. So that's why let's go Florida. I'm already jealous. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go Florida for that reason. Hey, um, we are, we although, are. like we said last time, I want McDavid to win. I just don't want the Oilers to win. Yeah, we are rooting for someone. But we'll, we'll get into the... We'll be unbiased as hell. We will be unbiased when we make our picks. Second thing I do want to say, though, is um, unlike last year, this should be a fun, tight series. So I hope the American viewers especially don't make it, have the casual, oh, yeah, New York's not involved, so who cares? Listen, Florida is the best team in the East and the whole league, in my opinion. Not just because they made the finals, but the way they played and showed it. Um, Edmonton side of things, listen, I understand it's not an American team. It's also... The one spot of Canada where people will always make fun of usually outside of Winnipeg. But they have the best hockey player in the world, Connor McDavid. So if you are an American and want to see your version of a prime LeBron James, a Michael Jordan, or whoever, we have that in Edmonton. That's the one thing I'll claim about being Canadian. Connor McDavid, um, trust me, just watch that game six highlights against the closeout game against Dallas and you'll see why. Oh, incredible. You, you will love it. <laughs> Absolutely um, incredible. I think you're going to mention something. About Pat McAfee? Oh, yeah. McAfee does a very good job of advertising hockey. You know, he also made a Canucks and Oilers video where he's like, the battle of top left. And Canada, Winnipeg. Right? So he <laughs> thinks we're in UConn for some reason, <laughs> yeah. which is um, um, absolutely disgraceful because okay, <laughs> um, lower mainland the best. And yeah. uh, also it's probably freezing as hell up. It's good hockey. Good outdoor hockey, at least. Yeah. But overall... McAvee has done a good job promoting hockey. For casual fans. For casual for fans. For being a casual fan. And he's a casual fan himself. Yeah. Nice assist by McAvee on the week. Soccer, I, yeah. Soccer assist. I was actually amazing. But getting back to it, he's done an incredible job of just, you know, putting hockey out there in his big, massive reach that he has. And overall, he just has a series where why hockey is the best, reacting to big hits, reacting to incredible games like he did game one against Canucks and Oilers, and we'll see what he Even does. Winnipeg the, in the first round, he, went, he yeah. was impressed with the, how the, the, whiteout, the barn yeah. looked there. Yeah. Um, that's why we had Greg Wyshynski on for the one that we had on the first time to see how, what it was like. So hopefully people tune in because we have the best player in the world uh, playing in this series, and we're going against the best team, right? Uh, yeah, it sucks. It's flo uh, Florida in terms of market-wise, but trust me, Florida's been repping the Stanley Cup Finals. Two years in a row. Five, five years in a row. A Florida team, I meant to say. Oh, the a state, Florida the team. The state of yeah, Florida. Yeah, the Tampa, yeah. Yeah, so... But no, let's get right into it. Um, what are you interested in? What's the matchups you want to see? We have an obvious answer for Zane. So, matchup interesting. I'm obviously there's like a player every matchup that you're obviously gonna see, but I'm just gonna allude to the team it, itself. The Florida Panthers shut down the uh, did Kutra lead the league in points, right? Yeah, uh, yes, I think he finished. I'll double so check. I'll fact check. The Florida Panthers shut down Nikita Kutrov, Braden Point, kind of Steven Stamkos as well and overall the star power in Tampa Bay Lightning. The Florida Panthers shut down David Pasternak, and the, that's their main offensive source yeah. in the Boston Bruins. The Florida Panthers 
took out a Ranger squad who had Zabinajad cooking, Kreider cooking, Pernirin cooking, Lafreniere cooking, and absolutely shut down all of them, even though Lafreniere was probably the best. Uh, so Kucherov, leading point at 144, Panarin 120 at fourth, and Pasternak was at fifth at 110. So, so to three out of the top five point leaders in the NHL, the Florida Panthers have absolutely shut down in this series. And like fully shut down because Panarin, I think, only had one goal. Pasternak was a bystander, in my opinion. Same with Kucherov. Even though Kucherov probably had a, a lot of assists, but like, well, yeah, didn't really impact the game too much. And so, that's what the Florida Panthers are. The why the Florida Panthers are so good, and why they have a chance of shutting down the best player in the world and another top so five player. We'll talk about the matchup and like how they how they will do that because there's a lot of examples from the Canucks series that Florida could follow, and they have better versions of those players, right? One thing I'm interested in seeing is Florida play. Florida shot against Andre Vasilevsky. I understand he may be out of his prime-ish for the last couple of years, but he, I still think he's one of the best goalies in the world, especially when it comes to playoff moments. Then they yeah, went yeah. up against Jeremy Swayman. Who was cooking. <laughs> then they went up against Igor Shosturkin, who was cooking. Oh, he was cooking like, even more. It leveled more. up further and further. Yeah, legit. Leveled so up. now I'm interested to see how Edmonton is going to deploy that defense because they're facing Stuart Skinner this time. The worst goalie of four. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, been, he's been good recently. But he has, again, he's still... But he also had his moments, yeah. Yeah, so... He, he, they're going to be there for them, at least goalie-wise. You know, I'm not saying it's an easy thing. We're going to obviously break down why it's not going to be an easy playoff matchup still because Connor McDavid's going to be involved. But just to, like I, th- I was thinking about that earlier. I'm like, they faced three of the top goalies in the last couple of years, especially, right? And then now they're going to go and face Stuart Skinner. So... With their size, with their ability to, um, <laughs> you're just laughing at that. <laughs> just crazy. Are like you going for the best goalie in the world to a guy who's just a, intentionally a role player? Who's what? <laughs> was he the worst goalie in the playoffs, Stuart Skinner? No, nah, I wouldn't say he was the worst. He had a worst stretch, but like he came okay, bounced back. Okay, Cam Talbot was last, probably, off oh. the top of my head. Halibut was the worst. Or I can know Washington's involved, so I won't. I won't. Count Halibut's that. the worst. <laughs> I, I, was, I, I will not include the first round matchups. I know it's just like we saw Stuart Skinner and had his moment in the the Canucks series, but he we saw him bounce back. Like he was absolutely incredible for his standards in game. A lot six, of that is credit to game six, seven, their, and a lot of that is cre- a lot of that is credit to the defense because they stepped yeah, up 100%, and made it hundred like, percent. They made it easy on him and not give up odd man rushes or giveaways like Evan Bouchard did in that one play or four check breaking down and Darnell Nurse and CC have to be separated and all that right. But no, sticking with Florida, um, we'll start with the, there. Um, how are they going to stop Connor McDavid or even just slow him down? The good news with them is um, the Dallas series against Edmonton was not aggressive. As you can, like, right? That's true. I and agree with there that. were not many penalties. Dallas is one of those teams that is least penalized, so maybe that's why they weren't overly aggressive. But we saw what the Canucks did. And we saw Connor McDavid be held pointless in uh, three out of the seven, I think. Was it games. three? It was three or four. One. I don't even know. Game one, game... Was it game five? Sorry, okay. I think it was just. I game. think he got a point in game one. No, he didn't. Okay. Game yeah. one, he was actually pointless. I thought he got like a secondary. Season. Game one, game five for I sure. I think game five. Game seven, I think he was held pointless as well. Game seven, he was held pointless. I think he was held. Oh, pointless. I swear, he had. This scored a power play goal. There's no way you have. Uh, okay, I'll fact check. But I think game five, he might have had a second assist as well on the first goal. But no, that that was Vander Kane on the. I'll fact check though, but. But yeah, no. So. But there's a blueprint there. There's a blueprint, right? Because yeah, like JT yeah. JT Miller. Isn't the best defender. Like, the greatest defender. I want to say that. He's a really good defender. He showed it in this year. Like He's he shown he could up. do that job, yeah. Because he's shown why he, he was a sulky vote-getter, I think, this year and last year in general. So, there's a blueprint. But, but you're going against Alexander Barkov, and that's the matchup. It's going to determine... The sulky guy. <laughs> yeah, like, it's the battle of the sulky right there, I think. between It's going to be McDavid, most likely, and then Alexander Barkov, and whoever wins the series, right? And um, But Barkov isn't, like, like a pesky type player, like a Miller is you know, constantly uh, on him, b- bruising him up and everything. So maybe Sam Bennett has that role, and we know what Sam Bennett's I- I thing is. Speaking of, by the way, Sam Bennett, Matthew Kachuk. I feel like this is also going to get ugly, because especially for Matthew Kachuk. Yeah. They're going against Edmonton. They're former Calgary players. So they know, they probably have some le- carryover beef, if there is any. Well, obviously healthy beef, like res- with respect. Beef never stops, man. But beef they know stops. what it is. Like to play against Connor McDavid because they, especially Matthew Kachuk has played them in the playoffs, and I'm sure that, that has a. Again, we talked about in the NBA well, how to motivate a player on top of not being in the finals. We talked about Kyrie Irving coming back to 
Boston, Chris Dubs Brzezingas playing Dallas for the first time, or not the first time. Brzezingas Prisinga, in, in definitely setting. took Zing, Brzezingas definitely took it personally. <laughs> yeah. You think Matthew Kachuk won't be like that? Because like, and especially last year, Matthew Kachuk was injured. I don't even know if he played in some well, of the games. Half the squad, Florida squad, yeah, so, was injured. So you in this game, you thought the Canucks Oilers series was aggressive. This is going to be even more aggressive because that's how Florida plays. They're, they're going to forecheck. They have the big guys in the front. Gustav Worsling is now uh, re- like elevated his name as a like, top 10 defenseman in the league. Before, anyone, no one knew who this guy was. Canucks got rid of him. When he got rid of him, Chicago couldn't keep him. Carolina couldn't keep him. Found a home in Florida and now signed the, one of the most valued contracts in the NHL. Um, Long term for like, what, five-ish million or whatever it was. So they, they have... They just, they just need to watch the Canucks series, and they have the better players, they have the better pests, and they have the next Patrice Bergeron and Alexander Barkov, who's going to be able to slow McDavid down because if the Canucks did it, and they did it well, and they have another guy, um, like the Canucks had Lindholm for dry side, maybe. These guys have Sam Bennett for one of them, and Alexander Barkov, those guys could flip-flop. That, and, you know, put pressure on the forecheck, and he got Stuart Skinner in net. They have the blueprint there. It, have, it's still a lot of work. They have the, Connor McDavid they, they, is by far the best. They player have in this game. the personnel, right? We've yeah. seen them do it all playoffs long, shutting down big stars, right? And now you're just gonna have to shut down the best player in hockey. All right, I'm gonna just say this off the bat, right? You're going up against McDavid and Drysaddle. So sometimes they're gonna be put together, but when McDavid and Drysaddle are on the ice, it doesn't matter if you're Barkov, Bennett, if you're JT Miller, you're not gonna do a one-on-one job. It's just it's next to impossible to do a one-on-one job against McDavid. I don't care if you are a Selkie winner. It's going to take a flat-out 5-on-5 five five performance to shut down McDavid. That's what it is going to happen. You just have the guy to be the primary defender, but Alexander Barkov is the best guy to have on McDavid, but even Alexander Barkov can't stop McDavid one-on-one. It just, game, it's just not going to happen. So he was all this in three games. So game all three, three, game five, and game seven were all pointless. He got a secondary assist or assist in game one where he struggled the most. Which is that was crazy. crazy, yeah. What the hell? So he really performed in like game six, game two, essentially. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Right. So, but, but yeah, yeah. So uh, talking about Barkov, he can't. Nobody can defend McDavid one on one. Paul Marie said that himself. Yeah. Right. Defending McDavid, Drysdale sometimes both together is gonna take all five players, all six, because Bobrovsky's gonna have to be sharp as well. And how do you do that? And I think this is what Florida done best and has been their main defensive identity of the playoffs. And which I thought the Kings could have done successfully with the one three one system is to clog up the neutral zone. And the Florida Panthers have clogged up the neutral zone really well in these playoffs, which kind of, you know, ruins the rhythm of attack, prevents zone entries. And uh, the biggest thing, it prevents McDavid to pick up speed because that in the neutral zone, that's where he picks up the most speed to attack in the offensive zone at his top speed where he's most dangerous. And uh, honestly, he almost ripped my heart apart every time I saw him do that. Yeah, they're, um, they kind of have a defensive breakdown because the one time the Canucks gave that defensive breakdown in game two was a tie and goal before they went to overtime with that. The mini bre- he got the mini breakaway, right? You know, JT Miller was constantly following him. Lindholm, whoever was following him, they might need to do that with Sam Bennett or Barkov. Um, obviously, the other person, Drysaddle, has arguably been their best player in the playoffs as a whole. Um... And he needs to be, like, looked, stopped and looked at. So, like, Florida, and I'm very confident Florida is able to do that because, again, the Canucks did it to a certain extent. Like, yeah, they, made, they held McDavid it. pointless three times. His impact is still going to be there. Oh, yeah. Right? He, he doesn't get points, but you're still going to be shadowing McDavid, which means more space uh, for Bouchard to play pucks through, like, a Nugent Hopkins. He's going to be the biggest X factor for the Oilers, in my opinion. And Hyman. <laughs> right? And, um... So that the Florida side of things, like that's where you gotta that's where you, they gotta look at. Um, like I said in, in the NBA one, playoff experience is a thing. Um, they both have it, but one of them only had final experience outside of Corey Perry on the Oilers. I don't know if anybody else on that team it did on um, that joined them, maybe. Uh Florida obviously coming back with that experience, but Noah Black said it himself to help motivate his team. We saw what the Buffalo Bills did in the nineties where they couldn't win any of the four they made in a row. And um yeah, so like, but experience is what's gonna, you, what's is what you're gonna lean on, what's gonna get you through the difficult moments, and that's edges for the Panthers for sure. Goaltending obviously goes to the Florida Panthers' edge. That's the biggest. That's there the biggest um, uh, gap between gap between like the different phases of the yeah, teams. Yeah, yeah. When when you're going about 
in defense, obviously I'm still going to give the edge to the Florida Panthers, but the Edmonton Oilers have been absolutely exceptional yeah. defensively. It's just going to come down to whose blueprint and whose game plan is going to be better. And for the Edmonton Oilers, we kind of already seen a game plan against them that the Canucks kind of executed almost successfully. And on the flip side, the Florida Panthers, we've seen the Boston Bruins hold out the Florida Panthers Here's the thing. for quite a bit as well. A lot of that has to do with Jeremy Swayman being exceptional. So some onus might have to go on Stuart Skinner to step up his game, which obviously is gonna he's so gonna have to do. Thing. But the Boston Bruins had games, a couple games where they held the Florida Panthers down. So here's the thing. Edmonton, all cut in the world, the reason why they got here was two reasons. Uh two big reasons. Penalty kill, right? Only allowed a goal in the Canuck series, and that's it. And the second thing is just how they were able to compact um, one goal leads, like Game Six, for example, the Edmonton, uh, the Cal, sorry, the Kings Game Four, I think it was. The Canucks they struggled a bit with that; they gave a lot of comebacks. But the, one thing with the Panthers, I was never, whenever they were down in this Ranger series, I was never scared that they were going to lose that game. They made a comeback; they forced two overtimes, a, a one or two overtimes, right? Edmonton needs to play on a lead because if. if Florida gets a lead. I we've seen it twice in that Rangers series, the game one especially where they won three nothing. You might not even get a chance. So I think on, it was Florida. game one, game five, and game six, where the Florida Panthers held the lead and it just pretty much never that way. Back. They maybe gave up one goal, sure, right? Yeah, but not they never gave up the yeah. lead. It was never a tie. So game. for Edmonton to win this series, they obviously have to have good goaltending on Stuart Skinner. Whenever they're on the power play, they need to make it punish because. As good as Edmonton's PK has been in this playoffs, um, Florida's penalty kill is up there as well. As well, yeah. New York Rangers only had one power play goal in that whole thing. Yeah, right. For a power so play that's that was another coming, matchup. Yeah. Let's talk, talk about that matchup very quickly before we go further a little bit. Power play one of Edmonton versus PK one essentially from uh, from Florida. Because right, you're like, gonna have the special. You have the historic. It, Edmonton power play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Special teams in general favors the Edmonton Oilers. There's no it question should. about that. It should. It does. It, it, it just does. Yeah. That's just how it is. But we've seen Florida Panthers, you know, cut down the special teams, right? The Rangers power play wasn't as good as it was early on in the Carolina series. So the Panthers have, you know, hit. I've shown that they could shut down a power play. The issue is, have they shown that they could shut down a 40, 30% power play? Right. On top of that, how are they going to get their power play goals? Because the Edmonton Oilers, I believe, have killed their last 26 yeah. power plays. So going into the well. Canucks series. So yeah. special teams, the more the Panthers stay out of the box, it's, it's better for them. That's for sure. Do the- We've seen the Oilers struggle five on five. But when it comes to a special teams battle, especially when Oilers on their power play, that's when they're the most dangerous. And there's no denying that. And I think everyone could agree on that. And even strength, the Oilers goal difference is zero. Yeah, it, right. it, they haven't been like um, utterly amazing and five and five. Did okay. So here's the thing: Do the Panthers have a guy named Elias something? No. Okay, that's <laughs> probably not going to be scored. The only guys that scored on the oh, there's PK was Elias Lindholm and Elias Petters. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no jokes aside. Um, but yeah, overall, listen, that just they, their special teams has been cooking. Edmonton's power play also struggled for a little from the second half of the Canucks series all the way up to until Game first. Five of Dallas. I believe. Yeah, the first four games of Dallas. Yeah, so yeah. up until game five. So they are cooking now. But again, Alexander Barkov, Sam Reinhart, uh, Sam Bennett, Gustav Forsling. Everyone Aaron on defense, Edlund, essentially. Yeah. Sergey Bobrovsky's your goalie, right? So it's going to be tough for Edmonton. A lot of things for Ed. It's like literally the NBA Finals. A lot of things have to go right for Edmonton, to, in my opinion, to beat the Florida Panthers. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that. I agree with that statement. Another thing is a difference between Bobrovsky and Jake Onger. In this playoffs, it felt like to me that Bobrovsky, all playoff long, has been, you know, he he hasn't faced many shots, but when he had to make a save, and yeah. he, he made a goddamn incredible one, and many of them, also, to absolutely change the tie of the game. Also, you could say he's argue- going to have to, he's going to need that in the finals 100% against the Edmonton Oilers. Arguably, Bobrovsky was, you could say arguably for the first series, the second best goalie in each series that he he was in. And he was just... Because I think he was definitely sec- definitely the second best in the Rangers. That, that doesn't mean he played bad. Yeah, yeah. But on paper, Swayman was ahead of him, in my opinion. And then you could argue Vaz- this year's Vasilevsky or Bobrovsky in general. Look, look, this, like, that sounds so disrespe- disrespectful, but it's actually not because Bobrovsky has been great in yeah. all three series. 
It's just that Swayman was exceptional and Shesterkin was exceptional and Vasilevsky was pretty good on when he was doing it. They, they, he was great too. I would say that was like an even matchup. Yeah. But overall, I want to turn around for Borowski in these last two years. Yeah. So here's the thing. I feel like we're discrediting Edmonton a little bit because we thought every, not just us, many people thought Dallas was easily going to the final. I did too. I yeah. did too. I had a clear winner. So they, and they were up 2-1 as well, Dallas. So Edmonton has shown a lot of resiliency, and this is where Chris Knobloch, I'm going to bring him in right now, in terms of he is a rookie head coach in the NHL, wasn't even hired at the beginning of the year, so he didn't even have a training camp or any of that. He, so he's doing stuff on the fly, essentially. And he made some gutsy moves, from the Canucks series to the Dallas series, bringing in Philip Fro- Broberg, cutting P- Corey Puri, putting him back, bringing in Cal Pickard, and putting that series at risk, essentially. Um, yeah. <laughs> but then bringing back... Um, Skinner. Skinner, even though Picker was fine, right? So the Oilers responded well to him and whatever his tactics were. So that's still going to be a scary thing. And I think we've we, we talked about enough. It's time to there's get one the last thing I want to mention. And X Factor. There's one last thing I want to mention. We, we mentioned Edmonton's attack. We mentioned Edmonton's defense, how they're good. We mentioned Florida's defense. But the offensive stars of the Florida Panthers are going to have to be Kachuk and Verhage, in my opinion, because Barkov is going to have a, a lot of, yeah. a lot on his plate, you know, defending McDavid or Dreisaitl, whoever he's going to be on. Then obviously Bennett's going to be a, the same thing. Panthers, again, could roll all four, all four lines. Verhage, a, a, excellent in the... And Kachuk were both excellent in the conference finals, right? Reinhardt got his goals as when he can, but those three players are going to have to carry the load offensively. And they're, the Florida Panthers are going to have to lean on them to get some goals because defensively, they're going to have their work cut out for them. Yeah, and on, and also, the one thing I'm scared for Florida is, I'm not saying that, it's probably because they did get goalie. To be fair, if like the games were close, they went to overtime. They lost two of the overtime games out of the three in the Rangers series. So there is risk that they could be beaten because they get goalied. In this case, Skinner is pressured because some of the saves that um Shesterkin made were like, what the hell? And Breakaways, like, two on ones. Hell? So all that stuff. <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of things. So my X factor for the for the Oilers is Skinner. And if we see a game four Stuart Skinner against LA Kings, yeah, he has the full potential to absolutely d- steal a game for that. I mean, yeah, Oilers. but and we multiple. have also seen game one and game three against the Canucks. Exactly. So it's just gonna be which side of Skinner shows up, right? And honestly, for a lot of a lot of this season, we saw in that game four Skinner against and the Kings. So, obviously, Skinner be the obvious answer. A uh, game six Skinner as well for yeah. the Dallas Stars because he was incredible in that one. Nugent Hopkins, for me, uh, is uh, like he's been like the guy that's come in on every phase, five on five, PK, and the power in the first power play unit as well. So, he's my other X factor that I'm looking at um, because McDavid's going to have his hands full. Florida ain't a dumb team. I know they were going to pay attention to the Canucks series. They're going to be very aggressive because they're that's their uh, mojo. Essentially, you're going to play against guys like Kachuk and Bennett. These guys are going to be aggressive on the forward check, uh, just aggressive in general, be a pest in general. And the Oilers have faced both Bennett and Kachuk, especially Kachuk a lot more um, in these last few years before he went to Florida. So, so yeah, uh, Oilers, I would agree with you. Skinner and New, Nuge will be the defensive, I mean, not defensive, the, the X factors of for the Edmonton Oilers. For the Florida Panthers, uh, I'm... I'm just going to say it again. I feel like I said this all of last year as well, last season. But Carter Verhege, <laughs> he is always going to be my X Factor because he is, he has... He's a, a playoff performer. He's, he's just a playoff performer. And if he performs and ha- has an offensive role, I expect Kachuk to have an offensive role in this series. And if Verhege's up there with him, with Reinhardt p- putting in goals, I think that will be absolutely key. And if I were to pick another one just to be defensively minded, it will have to be Sam Bennett and see how he could... You know, can he get that secondary assignment, give Barkov a mini rest in terms of not have Barkov against Leon and McDavid all the time, right? Like, he's Bennett line might have to be on Leon, Dreisaitl, or they might just even put Kachuk on it and make Kachuk play a, a the, full 200 game. The depth of the Oilers definitely need to step up. I'm looking at guys like Dylan Holloway, Warren Fogel, and these guys. Evander Kane. Evander Kane, right? And, um... So yeah, no, we'll see how that goes, and it's it's gonna be tough for the Oilers. So I think it's time for prediction and Consmite's prediction time. Consmite is all playoffs, right? I think so. 
I think it takes out all the playoffs. Okay, Edmonton, if they were to win the series, it's easily Connor McDavid. I don't care. What yeah, it's it's unless he like absolutely shits it and it, that's dry side. But the, uh, but my prediction, I'm going with the Florida Panthers. I just think they're the way better team. I'm saying it in six games because Connor McDavid is special, Leon Draisaitl special, Evan Bouchard has emerged as a top D man in the league, and they still have a, uh, the high their um their top end is very very elite. Florida has not played against a McDavid or a Drysaddle, I think, in these playoffs con- together. Yeah, right? <laughs> together. Uh, obviously, we you mentioned the names when they played um pa- uh, Pasternak, Panarin, and all those guys, um, and um, Kucherov. But these guys are together. They're in the finals for a reason. But I think Florida's experience from last year, they're battle tested. They're not as injured. They don't need to scrap their way into the playoffs like they did last year. Kachuk's healthy. He could be a little bit better, maybe, and I feel like he'll be motivated playing against um, Edmonton. So I'm going to go with the Florida Panthers in six. Uh, yeah, bring the cup home for them in the first time in, I think, 30 years. Luongo, baby. Director. Do it for Roberto Luongo, the Director baby. of excellence and goaltending. Goal he is. Excellent. He is. Uh, Bobrovsky has been excellent, so he's made an impact, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, I agree with you on the Florida, Florida Panthers. I'm still picking my poison over the series. That's not, uh, part of me believes it could be like a five game. Part of me believes it could be a seven yeah. game. But I would agree with a six game. I think that's fair. And um, this game, this could go seven games. It could go seven it games. Can. I just don't know how the Oilers are gonna really respond because we've we seen, we've seen the Dallas Mavericks and Celtics, and like the the Celtics are the Panthers and the Mavericks are the Oilers, and yeah. we just saw the Mavericks get. I don't know what destroyed. to expect of Skinner. That's the only hesitancy I have in this. But overall, Florida is the better team, even though the Edmonton might have the better star power, and a better five man unit on ice when you have like Ekholm and Bouchard with. McDavid, Drysdale, and Hyman, and the better power play in that fact too. But overall, the Florida Panthers are just a more. The thing with McDavid is, the Oilers is they could win like, I don't know. They've shown they could win ugly, but the Florida Panthers could win in many more different ways. Yeah, than admitted they could Oilers. win ugly, and they sure. could le- they could lean in different ways. But I for that reason, I am going with the Panthers. Florida's p- offense is better than what I think what Dallas showed in game, especially in Game Six, even or whatever the case. Yeah, no, you have like a fifty goal score on yeah. you. You have a guy who had a hundred twenty points last year. Yeah. And who's been on that same pace this year in the playoffs? Where he again stepped up. Barkov chipped in offensively as well. Before we go, his defensive duties. Before we go, Conn Smythe, the Oilers win this series if fill in the blank. If Stuart Skinner plays every game like Game Six against Dallas. Okay, um, for me, the Oilers win this series if plus what you said plus. Um, they step up, uh, their depth steps up along with McDavid, Drysaddle doing what they're doing. They're, yeah. So their depth has to step up because there's going to be a battle between Barkov and Bennett and Drysaddle and, and McDavid there. So that's if, and again, like same thing for the NBA one, same thing with this. Don't be surprised if Dallas Mavericks win that series. Don't be surprised if the Edmonton Oilers win this series as well. Um, even though the other t- the two Eastern teams in this case are should be the, the favorites. It shouldn't be like a mega favorite like last year. Oh yeah, yeah. So it should be a tighter series. That's Conch for sure. Might, is it? Is it just simply between Bar- Barkov and uh, McDavid, and whoever wins the series is gonna be one of those guys? Or do you have a different pick for the Panthers? All right, Panthers. Honestly, like I could see a world where obviously Kachuk could win. Gustav Forsling. <laughs> Gustav <laughs> Forsling. Uh, I could see a world where Verhage wins. I could see. A, I think my four would be Barkov, Kachuk, Verhage, Bobrovsky. It's kind of like what Vegas had last year. They had like four or five. They have multiple guys that could like, you know, get the job um, I just think... I would ultimately go with Kachak. Okay, so you're just going with the best player on the Essentially, team. yeah. <laughs> I'm going with Barkov because I feel like he will... He A lot is... If they win, it's going to be because of what he did against Connor McDavid. That's true. That's fair. In my opinion. So, um, yeah. So, I'm, I'm going to go with Barkov and the Oilers... Sorry, the Panthers in six. You were going with Kachak and the Panthers in six. Yeah, that's our predictions. Comment where your guys' predictions are down below. Um, do you like and or hate the Boston Pizza commercial if you're Canadian? <laughs> but no. Uh, once again, enjoy. It's the last series of the NHL playoffs. The last two teams are at it. Um, so yeah, make sure you guys enjoy this. Have fun, right? We're not gonna see this again till October. Like competitive yeah, NHL, October, competitive yeah. NBA, even. But the good news for soccer fans is we're gonna have a big month for soccer. But we're not gonna get into that right now. So make sure you guys like the video. Comment down below your predictions and everything and subscribe to the channel hit the post notification uh bell as well um audio listeners make sure you guys rate review and download the podcast we appreciate you guys um for uh 
doing that over there as well and follow our socials link down below we'll be coming back on posting on tiktok and instagram reels as well hopefully and just keep an eye on videos coming out um especially when the season uh the playoffs end peer lists are going to be out pretty much instantly so um other than that we'll catch you guys in the next one peace, peace.